Let's take a look at the top story we're tracking for you this hour. As Ethiopia's war-torn Tigray continues to be on the boil, rebel leaders on Monday said that they have launched a new offensive in the conflict's torn northern region against the federal troops. This latest development comes two weeks after the Ethiopian government declared a unilateral ceasefire to quell the growing crisis. Federal forces have claimed to seize major towns in southern Tigray, including Korem and Alamata. The Ethiopian government is yet to comment on the latest territorial gains. This latest offensive comes just days after Ethiopian PM Abiy Ahmed claimed a landslide victory in the parliamentary polls. The vote was a test for Abiy, who came to power in April 2018, after the former prime minister resigned amid widespread protests. Abiy Ahmed, however, has drawn immense international criticism for unleashing violence in the war-torn Tigray region. The region has been witnessing turmoil since November last year, when the Ethiopian government launched military operations against Tigray forces after the latter rejected political reforms and captured army bases. Ethiopia's government last month declared a unilateral ceasefire in Tigray as its soldiers retreated ahead of a resurgence of Tigray fighters in the region. The rebel leadership demanded a full withdrawal of Eritrean troops and Amhari fighters from Tigray region as a key condition for the resumption of dialogue with the federal forces. They have also called for the restoration of their dislodged Tigray government as one of the several preconditions for probable peace talks. The conflict in Tigray has killed thousands of people and has led to mass hunger and reports of famine in the region. For more on this, Coletta Wanjoi is joining us live from Addis Ababa. Coletta, the rebels have launched a new offensive despite the announcement of a ceasefire by the government. Could this trigger a fresh humanitarian crisis in the region? Well, as the Tigray Defense Forces says that it will not stop until uh, it makes sure that it gets back what it calls the, the pre-war borders. That means uh, the borders that it believes belong to the Tigray. Um, and that, that was uh, before the, the, the government um, launched its operation there. So as it continues to do that and the government insists that it is still in control, we have a humanitarian crisis. The United Nations says about 4 million people need um, at least very urgent uh, needs. And the WFP says that it is struggling to make sure that uh, these needs um, get there. Uh, well, we know that the latest is the United Nations World Food Program says that at least 50 trucks have managed to enter the, the, the Tigray region, at least the capital. Uh, but it says these are not enough because it needs to have at least double that number of trucks, at least almost daily, to be able to fully satisfy the demands of the people there. So we have a humanitarian crisis that the United Nations continue continues to say that is being exacerbated by continued fighting in the region. And on one hand, we have the Tigray Defense Forces struggling to, to amass control, if we use those words. And on the other side, uh, government claiming and insisting that it is still in control. And PM Abiy has just won a decisive electoral victory. Do you think the Ethiopian government could launch counter-strikes leading to a situation like last year? Well, I think what the, the victory of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed gives him is legitimacy. Well, we know he's been on a transitional period for the past about three years, uh, but now he's got legitimacy. If he forms, uh, if uh, his party chooses him and he's the one to form the government come October, then he will have the legitimacy to make decisions that will concern many other things. And we believe that probably the top of his agenda will be the northern region because the northern region has really soiled, quote unquote, his image, his Nobel Peace Prize image. It has soiled uh, the, the, the country's efforts to move towards uh, different kinds of reforms, national unity, economic reforms and all that. So he'll probably have that at the top of his agenda. And on the other side, he needs to amass as much support as he, need, as he should to be able to at least return calm and normalcy to the Tigray region as well as other regions in the country that are experiencing insecurity. And what is the impact of the latest offensive on aid efforts in the region? Thank you. 
Well, um, we know the government says, I mean, what the government is saying right now, it, it has declared a unilateral ceasefire. But on the other side, uh, we are seeing reports from the northern region of the Tigray Defense Forces continuing to get back what they believe is theirs uh, under control. So with this, then, um, we've got uh, different mixed reactions. On the ground, we understand that some citizens are very happy in the northern region. Uh, but on the other side, then, uh, despite all these uh, uh, war-related aspects, there needs to be a strategy, and that's what the humanitarian agencies are saying there needs to be a strategy on which um, or in which uh, the United Nations will be able to gain access and continue giving humanitarian assistance to the people who need it because without that then uh, we'll just have uh, continued fighting uh, continued uh, political rift if you may call that but uh, we have citizens at the bottom of this all so the United Nations is saying that it is remaining on the neutral point and it wants to ensure that uh, whoever is in control makes sure that the the, the humanitarian I, I mean assistance continues to go in the government of Ethiopia has already said that it has allowed humanitarian access in both air, uh, air access as well as road access and has pledged that it will continue to assist as well as ensuring that um, uh, humanitarian uh, crisis does not really go that bad. Colette Wanjoey, thank you for joining us and for your insights.